Now we're working on renal impairment part six, the final uh, installment of our instructional videos. I will be doing some cases with you um, later, but for now, this is all the data I wanted you to kind of review. Uh, last one, hooray. So we've already gone over a lot of this, trying to make a dosing adjustment in renal failure. What we want to be able to do is approximate the clearance and therefore the dose rate and dose interval in your patient who is taking specific drugs. So what do we need to know about your patient? We need to know creatinine clearance. Creatinine clearance gives us insight as to what, what our patient's GFR is, which is their renal uh, their ability to clear drugs renally, so their renal function. We also want to know what, how much of that drug is dependent upon the kidneys for clearance, and we do that with a fraction excreted unchanged in the urine. Um, and finally, we need to know what a normal total body clearance is in order to be able to adjust that new clearance with considering how much the the patient has renally has their kidneys impaired as well as how much the drug is dependent upon the kidneys for clearance. So with that in mind, I'm going to go through, and we went through a lot of this already, but I thought I should uh, give you some more background information on this. All right, you guys are, how do we determine the patient's renal function? I know you guys have, we'll go over this a lot with Dr. Shin, but using uh, what we're trying to do is determine the GFR. Why is GFR helpful in determining renal uh, function? Because of the intact nephron hypothesis. The intact nephron hypothesis says that if one part of the kidney is failing, then all of it is failing. So therefore, if the glomerulus is not working correctly, then the tubular secretion, tubular reabsorption, the tubule is not working and vice versa. If the tubular secretion isn't working, then the glomerulus won't work. So it's an all or none kind of thing. So what we can do is look at GFR to determine the patient's renal uh, function. GFR is actually a clearance. Uh, we want to look at the rate of excretion versus the concentration available. I'm not going to go into a lot of this. I assume Dr. Shin probably will. Um, to determine GFR, we basically want to see, um, want to measure a substance that is cleared only by the kidneys, that is filtered. Remember, filtration clearance is GFR times fraction unbound. So it needs to be filtered and it also needs to be totally unbound. If it's totally unbound, this becomes one and our filtration clearance is GFR, which is what we want to look, what we would like to have. And if it's not secreted or reabsorbed, then that means that the renal clearance becomes GFR. So we can just measure the renal clearance, which is up here, to get GFR of a substance that is totally cleared by the liver, filtered, not secreted or reabsorbed, and is totally unbound. Inulin is the best choice for that. But unfortunately, most people don't want to give a drug, which was what we would have to do with inulin. Creatinine, however, is pretty good. There is some secretion with creatinine, but it's fairly minimal. Um, and the thing that's great about creatinine is that it's already made in the body, and it's made at a fairly consistent rate. So you can look at the clearance of this product that's made from muscle breakdown. All right, um, so creatinine gives us a good estimate. How do we estimate creatinine clearance? Well, there's two probably most popular ways, and the MDRD has gotten a lot of publicity lately. But Cockroft and Gold is how we will use it for the use for the what we'll use for this class, and I believe Dr. Shin has some evidence as to why that might be the best choice anyway. So remember, it's 140 minus age times weight over 72 times the serum creatinine times 0.85 if you're a woman. Now, is this the absolute creatinine clearance? No, this is a guess based upon population data. 
Remember the weight is in kilograms and it depends upon if the patient is underweight, if their actual body weight is less than the ideal body weight, what do we use? Actual, right? If the patient is, um, their actual body weight is greater than their ideal body weight, but it's not greater than 30% over the ideal body weight, then we use ideal body weight. If the actual body weight is greater than the ideal body weight by greater than 30%, then we use an adjusted body weight, which is basically the ideal body weight plus 40% of what I call the fat weight, which is actual body weight minus ideal body weight. Sorry for all this scribbling. Um, cool, all right. So we are going to use uh, this way to use Cockroft and Galt to estimate um, renal function. Once you have determined your patient's creatinine clearance, you will then compare it to a normal creatinine clearance. So here's a normal creatinine clearance. We're gonna use 125 mils per minute. If your patient's creatinine clearance is, let's say, 62.5 mils per minute, we know then that we're at about 0.5 or 50% of normal, creat or normal creatinine clearance, which means our renal function for our patient is about 50%. We will then use that here in this equation uh, to determine our fudge factor. Our fudge factor will take our patient and the drug, remember the drug is determined, the FE of the drug, to give us our fudge factor here. If we multiply this fudge factor times our clearance, we'll get our adjusted clearance. That will be adjusted for our patient. That's what this little star means. We can then, this is, you know, you guys know this equation well. We can then put in our patient's adjusted clearance for their renal function into this equation, put in a target concentration, and determine our dose rate. But what we have to do here is a big thing. We have to make an assumption that the bioavailability is not affected by renal function. In other words, that bioavailability is equal whether you have renal impairment or not. We're making that assumption in order to use this equation. So then you can determine your new dose rate for your patient. Um, but again, we're making this assumption. It's important to know that. Um, to make, to do it, to determine your dose interval, we do that by determining the half-life. Again, put in your patient's adjusted clearance. And here, we're assuming, this is your new half-life, right? We're assuming again that the volume is not affected. This may or may not be true. Remember, both in the first part, we talked about things that, that renal impairment affect, and they can affect volume because they affect um, albumin, and they can affect uh, bioavailability because uh, of changes in the GI tract due to uh, drugs that we give, etc. So this may or may not be true, but you need to make sure you understand what assumptions you're making when you do this. We've done some uh, calculations and I'm gonna do some more videos to go over the key for these, but we've also done some playing with global RPH. I, don't, I think you should memorize this so you'd be able to use this and play with this. This is also a renal reference that you can put in your uh, bookmark in your um, computers or whatever you want so that you can see that. Micromedics will often have renal dosing in it as well. So there's other online helps for this. But what's great about our fudge factor is that we can do this for any drug, with, with whether we have the information or not. All you really need is FE and your patient's creatinine clearance to come up with new dosing regimens and rates that are very uh, logical um, if you're in a pinch. So it's a great tool. All right, thanks for your attention. We're gonna do some problems next. Thank you, bye-bye.